Hello everyone. Every month, News Bharti presents an exclusive interview for our viewers on interesting and intellectual topics, but with insights from prominent personalities of varied fields. Today, we have another such insightful discussion for you all. Every year on 19 February, we celebrate the birth of a legend, the birth of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, that changed the course of time and scripted history. However, there are two distinct periods and absolutely different implications of the Chhatrapati's role in the socio-political scenario of Maharashtra as well as the nation. When we talk about Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj in context with today's political framework, the entire narrative changes completely, and that is exactly what we will be talking about today. Other than the numerous titles he holds, our today's guest has an emotional connect with the reflection of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj's thoughts in today's times. We all know him as a member of Parliament for Rajya Sabha from Maharashtra, the President of Indian Council for Cultural Relations, the Director of Public Policy Research Centre, and the Vice President at Rambau Maharaji Prabodini. Our guest for today's interaction is Dr. Vinay Sahasrabuddhe, who has also served. As a national vice president for Bharatiya Janata Party. Namaste, Vinay. So today, when we talk about Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj's role in Maharashtra's politics, then its short shot is quite uh, vital. Every political party and their leaders have a different image of the Chhatrapati, which is a reason why the true ideology of the Chhatrapati doesn't reach the common people. Why do you think is it so? Why is it so puzzling for the political parties to accept the entire philosophy and ideology of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj? Why so far it has been accepted merely in fragments? Well, basically because uh, the habit of uh, most political party parties, if not all, is to look at our icons in a particular uh, perspective. and majorly converting them into some kind of symbols of a particular social group which goes against the very greatness of these personalities i am sure people in maharashtra are aware of uh, a poem by kusum agraj v v shirvarkar uh, the name of the poem is putale which is statues and it goes like this that there are four statues in a particular city of mahatma jyotiba phule chhatrapati shivaji maharaj lokmanya tilak and uh, maybe couple of others as well uh, and mahatma gandhi yes of course and uh, in the v hours uh, where there is darkness everywhere nobody is around and all these statues come together and they discuss and mahatma jyotira phule says unfortunately these people created me a leader of mali or the gardening community gardener community chhatrapati shivaji maharaj also says that uh, while i tried in my own way to establish swaraj many people look at me only as a maratha leader even the historians have described him as a maratha warrior kind of a thing and then lokmanya tilak says they made me a brahmin leader and lastly mahatma gandhi says at least you have one community behind you if i look back there is only a plain white wall behind me there is nothing else so in a way it's a very uh, sad commentary i would say on the politics of fragmentation in our country and also some kind of a populist vote bank politics if political parties as i said a certain section of political parties look at our icons in this uh, particular angle i believe uh, that it's something very very detrimental to the social integration and which is why very sadly chhatrapati shivaji maharaj and his greatness is given a back seat and uh, his social background is brought to the fore which is uh, extremely unfortunate 
uh, it is a disservice to the society, I would say. And in a way, it is also belittling the greatness of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. So, I would say it is the lure of vote bank politics. It is the habit of uh, looking at the society in a fragmented manner and cultivating that fragmentation for petty political aims, which, as I said, has become the habit of certain political parties, is the root cause why we are in a way compelled to discuss this particular point, sadly. Uh, India has completed 75 years of independence and yet for all this time, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj has been constantly portrayed as the king of merely the Marathi speaking people, although it is not so, as we just discussed. There are so many aspects about the Chhatrapati that have remained hidden all this time that explain how his, e his efforts for Swarajya were not limited around Sayyadris and the Deccan Plateau, but were nationwide. Do you think there had been a deliberate attempt for such portrayal of the Chhatrapati that he is not a nation's hero, he is just the hero of uh, Maharashtra? Have different ideologies restricted the Chhatrapati to particular communities or even religion? Well, I would say it is a mix of uh, some kind of ignorance and uh, politics. We know even great people who had once occupied highest positions in our country were not able to grasp the greatness of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. And in some of their writings, they called names to Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Everybody knows about it. I don't want to uh, refer to that uh, in an elaborate manner. But that ignorance was there. And therefore, uh, the greatness of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj could not be, unfortunately, grasped by many Indians uh, and there are certain historians also. So, that is because of ignorance, because of uh, an academic inertia, I would say. But then there is also politics to that, as you have referred to. Because uh, unfortunately, see, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, all said and done, in Marathi what we say as Rayatesa Raja, which was which means the king of the people. And therefore, uh, when he was a king of the people, he was king of everybody, every section of the society, regardless of their ways of worship, regardless of their social background, regardless of their vocations. And therefore, and he, he, he true to the responsibility that he was shouldering, his conduct also reflected that he was the king of the entire society. All the people, including all kinds of ways of worship. But unfortunately, since his uh, focus was basically liberating our country from the invaders. See, we are today celebrating the Ajadi Ka Amrut Mahotsav. And I would say, I am not a historian, I am not an expert in all these issues. But as a student of history, I would definitely describe Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj as the first freedom fighter in recent times, in the modern history of our country. Because what, what, what all was he doing? Was he just trying to accumulate wealth? Was he just trying to build property? He was creating a Swaraj, which is our own Raj, which is independence, which is freedom. It was not for no reason that Mahatma Gandhi and before him Lokmanya Tilak also used the same term Swaraj. Swaraj, our own rule, self-rule. And Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj was saying the same thing. So, although he was a king, and I must mention over here, I believe that would help people who are ignorant about him to uh, gather some insight about the greatness of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Many, including Samartha Ramdas, and later on I find the reflections in the uh, very well-known uh, play by Marathi playwright Ram Ganesh Gadkari, which is Raja Sanyas, where 
the right kind of description of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj one comes across. And Ramdas Ji, Ramdas Swami also described him in the same way. And what was the description? The description was Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj was the Upabhoga Shunya Swami. He was king, no, no doubt about it. But that kingship for him was kind of guardianship. Later on, Mahatma Gandhi talked about trusteeship. When even that term was not around, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj gave us an example through illustrations of his own conduct, his own approach as to how a king eventually is just the trustee. And therefore, Swami. Swami is owner. Owner is custodian, protector. But Upabhoga Shunya, no self-aggrandizement, not for any selfish purposes. That was his greatness. But unfortunately, since he was talking about Swadesh, Swaraj, Swabhasha and Swadharma as well, because ultimately, who were the invaders? They were Mughals. And they wanted to establish a Mughal Shahi kind of thing over here, undermining the tradition and culture of our country. And therefore, uh, there have been umpteen number of references in the history by very authentic, knowledgeable researchers that he was out to establish a Hindavi Swaraj, which means the Swaraj created by the Hindus. And when I say Hindu, it, is need not, it need not be confining only to a particular way of worship. It was the Raj of the sons of the soil. It was the Raj of the indigenous people in a way. In modern terms, if we are using these terminologies, modern times, then maybe they are more connotative. But then, since that word Hindavi Swaraj was there, since there were several references, like for example, uh, even Chhatrapati Sambhaji Maharaj, later on in a Sanskrit uh, uh, agreement kind of, Dhanapatra as what they call, he has mentioned about uh, uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj that he had taken a vow kind of, a pledge to free this land from the clutches of the invaders. Mlinch is the term that they have used. But then unfortunately, since there are references to Hindu, Hindu Hindavi Swaraj, Hindu Padapat Shahi, many people who are averse to all these terms because of the pseudo-secular mindset that they have, they portray Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj in a particular way, sadly, to safeguard their vote banks of a particular way of worship. This is the sort state of affairs. And in the process, we are doing great injustice to Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Talking about Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj in context with Maharashtra's politics, uh, Maharashtra quite recently got its new governor. The last governor, Bhagat Singh Koshyari, resigned with a controversial background of disrespecting national heroes including Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. So, what is this case really according to you? Well, I would, uh, I would suggest you should have used the term alleged disrespect alleged. because it is an allegation by certain right. sections. Uh, I mean, the outgoing governor is also a knowledgeable person. I don't think uh, he had any intention to disrespect any of the uh, Marathi icons for that matter. But I am not going to comment on that because it may appear like an advocacy of a particular incident. I believe better we keep that away. Any particular comment need not be kind of stretched to convert it into a kind of uh, disrespectful observation. I don't think so. Uh, I believe Nobody can, nobody has the guts in a way to disrespect neither Maharashtra nor 
all the icons that this land has produced. So I don't think uh, the incident need to be given so much of importance. Right. Another row that emerged recently uh, was uh, regarding Chhatrapati Sambhaji Maharaj that whether he should be titled as Swarajya Rakshak or Dharma Rakshak. So what is your take on that? Well, I think uh, a person who was committed to establish Swaraj, whether Chhatrapati Sambhaji Maharaj or whether Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj or even let us say all others including Bajira of Peshwa, all these were fighting for establishment of Swaraj and that had become their duty and in for duty in our Indian uh, consciousness we use the term Dharma. So the one who protects duty is the Dharma Rakshak. What is wrong in it? And therefore those who are opposing from a very narrow mindset, I think uh, they need to introspect. In our country, Dharma is not about religion. It is also about your duty consciousness. We talk about Putra Dharma, Shezar Dharma, which is the, uh, the, the duty of a neighbor kind of due to that comes to you because of your neighborhood. So all these things are pretty much there and everybody knows about it. But there are certain people who wantonly to meet their, as I said, partisan aims, try to misinterpret the things. I believe Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, Chhatrapati Sambhaji Maharaj and all others thereafter were all Dharma Rakshak in every sense of the term. Let me make it very clear. Right, sir. Uh, when we look at the political history of India, we see that uh, several heroes, several personalities have been intentionally taken up uh, as a central figure of a movement uh, politically. Uh, and uh, there have been reactions, there have been reactive movements to those movements. So, uh, in a recent news, Amit Shah will be coming uh, to Pune on 19 February, where, where he will be inaugurating uh, Asia's, or I guess, world's first historical theme park, Shiv Srushti, which is of course based on Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj and his legacy. So, is there being any attempt to bring, by BJP, to bring uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj in the forefront of a political warfare and are there any parallels to the Ram Janmabhoomi movement that had emerged in the 1980s? What is your take on that? Well, I believe construction of Ram Janmabhoomi should not be seen as a partisan agenda. There were many political parties and there were individuals in several other political parties in different uh, with different ideological backgrounds who were all in support of Ram Janmabhoomi. It was not a partisan agenda. Similarly, Shiva Srushti and the creation of this kind of a, as what you have described, theme park kind of, which is in fact a monument as well, which is in fact a memorial as well. But then uh, people can look at it from different angles and there is no issue about that. Point is, all these things are a part of our very rich heritage. And therefore, if the Home Minister is coming, I think uh, that is in the fitness of the things. It should not be seen as, uh, I mean, Amit Shah being a BJP person. Uh, that kind of color, I believe, is uh, unnecessary to be attached to this kind of an event. In a way, the dream that perhaps every patriot person might have seen about uh, recreating the Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj related uh, uh, infrastructure in a particular way in the form of a theme park. That was not the dream only of uh, Marathi people or Maharashtrians. It was for every Indian because it will become a pilgrimage. People will draw inspiration after they go over there. And thankfully, Baba Sahib Purandare, uh, in a way, made it a point and very resolutely worked on this particular project, which is why the project could take some shape and the first phase of which 
is now going to be uh, dedicated to the nation, I would say, in, uh, in the presence of uh, Amit Shah. So, I think uh, every Indian who is patriotic, who has a nationalistic spirit and who believes in all the ideals that Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj epitomizes, I believe will take pride in this particular function and will be happy to visit and to draw inspiration and learn about in great details the contribution of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Right, sir. Uh, the event, the historical event of Shiva Jayanti, the day Shivaji Maharaj was born, again, that event is has been made into another political controversy. So, is there is another thing, there is another event of Shiv Raja Abhishek Divas. So, why are there, why do we see two political sections uh, in Indian politics? that the one section is supporting celebration of Shiva Jayanti and opposing or, or demotivating the celebration of Shiva Raja Abhishek Divas, whereas the other section is upholding the uh, celebration of Shiva Raja Abhishek Divas. What is your take on that? I think we need not be given so much importance to all these things. If people are hijacking a particular event for their partisan political aims, I think the best way is to ignore that. Because Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj and his contribution, the way he lived his life and the mission that he had undertaken is so great that uh, some aberrations in uh, celebrations of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj related uh, any particular day, his uh, birth anniversary his Punyatithi or death anniversary or his coronation day, I think is a very, very uh, solemn kind of an occasion. And uh, we need not be overshadowing the purity with which people observe these days. And a large section of the people do it with that deep sense of respect for Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Forget these political shenanigans. They are not going to kind of hijack this national hero. Uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj is the human embodiment of good governance. Prime Minister Narendra Modi keeps on emphasizing on the Chhatrapati's policies and uh, recommends it to all the ministers in their, uh, their respective administration. Which politicians, according to you, can be looked at as perfect examples or good examples in that case for implementing good governance effectively and in its true sense in today's time? I think it is not required that we should single out any particular person. There are many politicians in our country who are uh, kind of in the awe of uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj's life and his mission. And they are trying to implement and trying to emulate a part of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj's world view or all the ideals and values that Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj in a way symbolized. And there are many and therefore uh, I will give a little elaborate answer to this question which is why uh, we should be looking at Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj and uh, his contribution from this perspective, instead of uh, taking a very fragmented view that he was a great warrior. Yes, of course he was a warrior, but he was a supremely great uh, strategist. See, the guerrilla warfare is his contribution to the strategic thinking. And therefore, uh, that is something which is very unique about Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Not only that, the kind of uh, setting on which Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj took the kagals and decided to establish Swaraj. Try and understand that from 12th or 13th century onwards, this nation had seen only invasions after invasions. And there was no resistance. I mean, small attempts were made, no, no doubt about it. But a resistance which will acquire national dimension, that 
एबिलिटी टू थिंक बिग फॉर समथिंग वेरी यूनिक विथ छत्रपति शिवाजी महाराज एंड देर फॉर ही अंडरस्टूड द एनॉर्मिटी ऑफ द मिशन दैट ही हैड अंडरटेक सो ही वॉज नॉट ओनली हैप्पी विथ द कोंकण रीजन एंड कपल ऑफ फोर्ट्स हियर एंड देयर हिज एस्पिरेशन वेर सर्टनली नेशनल and later on we found like for example recently we celebrated the uh, delhi uh, victory day of mahaji shinde 12th of february when he conquered delhi and re established the bar part shah over there but for 30 long years between 1773 to 18 not three almost it was the mahaji shinde who was ruling over delhi and who was mahaji he was of course a sardar of the maratha kingdom and maratha in the uh, in the in the wider sense of the term i am not referring to any particular community so that ability to think big that uh, desire to create a sense of confidence amongst the people that yes we can also fight with the invaders and we can also establish our own swaraj it's something which chhatrapati shivaji maharaj tried to inculcate in the society of his times and this is a kind of a renaissance i would say of his times and therefore it is important and not only that uh, as i said uh, he was a strategic thinker of a extraordinary ability to envision as to what would happen in the future see in his times i believe he must be the only king who paid attention deep attention minute attention to building to to build his own naval force his navy was known for all uh, great things and that extraordinary importance of uh, the uh, protection of our coastal line it's something uh, that brings to the fore his strategic thinking which as i said was extraordinary he was a linguist i would say because the way he tried to coin some marathi words and remove words that had in a way become a part of our day to day conversations but which were not originally marathi words so he created rajya vyavahar kosh a kind of glossary of terms which we use in governance i mean all these kinds of very significant uh, areas he touched upon and contributed and tried to build all these these things i believe are something very very unique he also took care of uh, every section of the society i am sure you his students of history know that when he issued instructions to his army men he said that while moving from one place to the other wherever you stay ensure that at the end of the stay you try to uh, make sure that the oil lamps that we normally light in the night are later on uh, kind of taken away by you because otherwise the oil will get here and there and there are rats who may come over there and chances are that the crops due to the uh, oil and other things that are there may catch fire so i mean going deep uh, into the details of all those things he issued all the instructions Uh, not only that uh, i would say that the way he constituted his cabinet look at the cabinet the ashta pradhan i believe every other segment of the society was uh, represented over there so he was an integrationist he knew what exactly are the challenges before the society and he tried in his own way through all the creative talent at his command find solutions while many other small kingdoms were a part of the problem chhatrapati shivaji maharaj and his life and mission 
and the Swaraj that he established were a part of the solutions. Right, sir. Uh, recently on Parakram Devas, when Sarasanga Chalak Mohanji Bhagwat spoke about Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, a big row was sparked by the leftists putting forth that Sangha has started to associate themselves to ideologies that have remained disassociated with them since a long time. And not just Netaji, there have been similar claims about Baba Sahib Ambedkar as well. Uh, and now there are chances and there are sections of um, the political scenario that they are claiming similar claims about Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj as well. So, what is your take on that? Well, I believe, uh, why should we single out uh, Rashtriya Samsak Sangha? Great heroes are not the property of a particular community or a political party or an ideological group. They are the national heroes. They are the icons in a way. And therefore, every Indian takes pride in the work carried out by these great sons of Bharat Mata, whether it is Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, Nitaji Subhash Chandra Bose, or Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. And therefore, they, I mean, they were a part of this society. They are a part of the consciousness of this society today. And therefore, they belong to the entire society. I think, again, we will be doing great injustice to these great heroes, universal heroes, I would call them, produced by India. And we will be doing great injustice to our own people as well. So, better we refrain from taking a skewed approach and looking at them from this kind of a, uh, I would say, manufactured controversy. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. Thank you.